It's the night of June the 10th, 2016, in Orlando, Florida. It's a Friday evening, and the atmosphere is warm and pleasant. The Plaza Live Theatre, one of Orlando's oldest venues, is particularly busy tonight with several concerts and events. One of these acts was 22-year-old Christina Grimmy, who was opening for the band Before You Exit. Around 300 people were in attendance. Although she wasn't a household name, Christina was on the cusp of a very promising career in the music industry. In 2014, she was featured on season 6 of a hit talent show, The Voice, where she impressed many of the judges and placed third overall. Very popular on social media, having a YouTube channel with 3.5 million subscribers and a Twitter account with nearly 950,000 followers. The concert was scheduled to begin at 7.30pm that evening and she was also hosting a meet and greet afterwards where fans could get a chance to purchase merchandise and meet Christina themselves. The event started off as normal with Christina performing many of her most popular songs, most of which were covers of popular singers such as Miley Cyrus and David Goetta. Little did she know that the man who would end her life was only a few yards away from her. The young man, who was dressed in a plaid flannel shirt and was wearing a black baseball cap, stood against the wall at the back of the crowd. Although he looked at a place, given that most of Christine's fans were young women, his presence raised no serious alarms as he kept himself to himself. Since there weren't a ton of people at the event, the security was fairly minimal. There were security guards, but they were unarmed and the only attendee screenings conducted were bag checks. After the show, the man got in line behind throngs of fans who were waiting to meet the young singer. After a short wait, it was his turn. The man awkwardly paused in front of Christina. She did what she always did when she dealt with awkward fans. She opened her arms to hug him in order to break the ice. As soon as she did this, the man quickly drew a black 9mm Glock 19 pistol and fired five shots at her from close range. Three of these shots hit Christina, instantly knocking her to the floor. Christina's older brother and best friend, Marcus Grimmy, was working the merchandise table nearby. He was a road manager and saw the whole thing. He got up from the table screaming and lunged at the man, tackling him to the ground. As Marcus struggled with the gunman, the gunman dropped his weapon and Marcus tore his flannel shirt. This allowed the gunman to break free and take several steps backwards. He then drew a Glock 26 9mm from his waistband and shot himself in the left side of his head, instantly killing him. Police and EMS arrived at the scene quickly, but Christina was pronounced dead at the scene. One of the bullets hit her in the right side of her head, lodging in the back of it. This wound in and of itself would have been fatal. However, the other two wounds she suffered to the torso were also just deadly. One entered the right side of her chest, shattering her ribs and perforating her right lung and heart before lodging in her right back. The third shot entered the top of her left shoulder, fracturing some additional ribs and puncturing and lodging in her lung. Doctors later determined she likely died instantly. The event made national news. The next evening, 49 people would be killed at the Pulse nightclub in Orlando, making it the deadliest American mass shooting at the time. The scale and timing of that event essentially overrode the courage of the grimy shooting, making an event people only remembered vaguely. However, almost three years later, investigators still hadn't concluded exactly what drove the gunman, identified as Kevin James Label, to travel a hundred miles from his home just to murder the up-and-coming artist. The investigation has, however, provided plenty of evidence that can lead us to infer why and how these two totally different people's worlds collided on that fateful night. In the weeks leading up to the shooting, Christina and her brother Marcus had been on tour with the band Before You Exit. The two shared a tour bus with the band and had travelled around the country. The Orlando concert was scheduled to be one of the last stops on their tour. Even though Marcus was nowhere near as famous as his sister, he was still a big part of her career. 
On this particular tour, he was tagging along to play guitar during Christina's act and also work as her road manager. The two were described as inseparable and both even had matching player one and player two video game tattoos on their arms. Although Christina was mainly known for her singing talent, she was also very well known in the gaming and streaming world. She was especially known for playing Nintendo's Legend of Zelda series and uploading gameplay and commentary videos to a YouTube channel, Zelda X Love 64. Christina's parents, Bud and Tina, had both been aware of Christina's musical talent for several years. According to them, she showed an interest in music at a young age and also when she was a baby. She wouldn't talk, but she la 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 Unfortunately, Tina would be diagnosed with breast cancer in early 2010s and would later pass away in 2018. As Christina got older, she initially was shy about her talents, but eventually in 2009, Marcus helped her out of a shell by convincing her to start uploading music on YouTube. As mentioned earlier, most of Christina's music was covers of famous artists. However, this didn't stop her from racking up hundreds of thousands of views on YouTube. This early success inspired her with enough confidence to audition for NBC's singing competition, The Voice. Her first audition for the judges was a cover of Miley Cyrus's hit song, Wrecking Ball, which earned universal praise from all four judges. She would later to a new woman that Kevin did not get along with. Over the course of the two years, police were called to the Little Bell home six times, all involving disputes between Kevin and his father's girlfriend. Most of the time, these fights involved alcohol and domestic violence. Kevin even went as far as filing two separate domestic violence injunctions against her due to conflict. According to other family members, Kevin didn't have any discernible mental health issues, although he did live like a hermit, spending most of his time in his room engrossed in his computer. He also didn't like light and kept the windows of his bedroom covered with aluminium foil and blackout curtains. He also sometimes wore earplugs because he had an aversion to loud noises. Other than staying at home, Kevin didn't do much other than his job, which was a part-time job at the local Best Buy. Although Kevin was a good worker, he was described as awkward when people in management moved him around to different departments over the nearly 10 years that he worked there. Eventually, he was assigned to work for the Geek Squad department in order to minimise his awkward interactions with customers. Kevin had attended St. Petersburg College but dropped out during his junior year in 2010, around the time his mother died. He allegedly dropped out of school because he neglected his studies due to his obsession with a hugely popular World of Warcraft fantasy game. For most of his young adult life, Kevin never showed an interest in romance. He never had a girlfriend or significant other and never expressed an interest in girls at all. That all changed once he discovered Christina's YouTube channel. He saw her singing on YouTube in 2015 and slowly fell in love with her. To him, she seemed like the perfect soulmate for him. They both loved video games and were seen as introverted. After a couple of months of watching her, he became obsessed with her, to the point that he needed to make the decision to change his appearance to become more desirable to her. He got LASIK eye surgery to correct his vision and got his teeth whitened. He also got hair plugs to fix his hairline and went on a vegan diet losing 50 pounds in the process. Additionally, he also changed his religious beliefs. Christina was a devout Christian who often mentioned her faith on a YouTube channel. Although Kevin was a self-proclaimed atheist, he later told Dennington that Christina's religious views changed him and helped him to see the world in a different way, and that if there is a God, he has seen it in her. By spring of 2016, Dennington began to realise that his friend's obsession with the singer wasn't healthy and he shared his concerns with the manager at Best Buy. The manager told Dennington that since Kevin wasn't acting out at work, there was nothing he could do. As someone approached, Kevin's obsession worsened. 
Dennington tried to point out to Kevin that it was an illogical to think that he could begin a relationship with Grimmy, especially given that Kevin had never met her in person. Upon hearing this, Kevin got angry and threatened to end their friendship, despite being friends for over 10 years. He also stated that he planned to meet her in person sometime and that she was his soulmate. Kevin also confessed to Dennington that he constantly monitored Christina's social media accounts, despite not having any social media himself beforehand. He created a Facebook account for the sole purpose of stalking her. On June the 5th, 10 days before the show, Kevin had his last day at work. Dennington would later record that Kevin was acting odd and sad. He returned some borrowed magazines to Dennington and then later pulled him aside and told him, I love you, brother. He also mentioned that he was tired and ready to ascend. Although this was alarming to Dennington, he wasn't totally sure what Kevin meant since Kevin never threatened him or talked of harming himself. Dennington was also not aware of some of the purchases Kevin had made in the past two weeks. He first bought a $15 ticket to Christina's Orlando show. He then purchased two handguns. First was the Glock 26 9mm handgun. A week later, he purchased the Glock 19 9mm handgun. In addition to the two guns, he also purchased a 5-inch hunting knife and sheath. Gun holsters, three magazines and 75 rounds of Fernandi critical duty and critical defence bullets. In addition to the two guns and knives, Kevin also packed some toiletries, his headphones, earplugs and a sleeping mask. Before he set off on his mission, Kevin removed the hard drive from his computer and hid it. The last person to see Kevin was his father Paul, who saw Kevin get into a cab on June the 9th, the day before the shooting. Kevin did not say goodbye and didn't say where he was going. Later that same day, he arrived at the Orlando Marriott and paid the cab driver $200 for the 100-mile drive. The driver would later describe Kevin as quiet and weird. That night, Kevin had stayed in and ordered around $20 of room service food. The next day, Kevin prepared for the concert. He placed most of his belongings in his drawstring bag, which he then placed in the hotel safe under the TV in his room. He clipped two gun holsters onto the side of the back of his jeans. Additionally, he also strapped the hunting knife to his left ankle under his jeans and loaded up his guns. He left the hotel room for the last time around 6pm that night, carrying his weapons, wallet, hotel key and concert ticket. On his way over to the plaza live, he stopped in an old navy store and purchased a black baseball cap and water bottle. Once he arrived, he easily passed through security, unchecked and passed a sign banning guns from the premise. He wasn't carrying a bag, so security saw no need to search him. Inside the venue, Kevin picked a spot near the back and kept to himself where the concert started. Chilling footage shows the man who killed Christina Grimmy at her Orlando concert just before he shot the singer at a meet and greet. In videos released by the Orlando Police Department, 27-year-old Kevin Loibel is standing in the back of the concert hall in a flannel t-shirt waiting to see the voice contestant. Also released by authorities, photos of evidence, the crime scene and the 911 calls in the aftermath of the shooting that happened six months ago. Christina got shot, Christina Grimmie. Other pictures show Loibel's hotel room at the courtyard by Marriott, where authorities found his drawstring bag packed with toiletries, bullets and a sleeping mask. Loibel pulled a gun on Grimmie after her concert. As mentioned earlier, once the show was over, Kevin proceeded over to the meet and greet where he then shot Christina multiple times. According to Marcus, who wrestled with a 5 foot 3 inch Kevin, I looked and she, Christina, was on the floor and I just remember screaming bloody murder and jumping on him, then hitting him. Kevin managed to escape Marcus's grip and quickly shot himself in the head before law enforcement could arrive. The aftermath was a blur to Marcus, who later underwent therapy to deal with the trauma of what he just witnessed. It was like a nightmare. Everyone was gone. I'm the only one there and I'm sitting on the floor with two bodies, he said. 56-year-old Mark McDonough 
who was a doctor and father of three members of Before You Exit, came over to see what the commotion was all about and why concert goers were fleeing en masse. He first approached Kevin, who was slumped against the wall. He had no pulse. MacDonald then ran over to Christina and checked her vitals. She was in agonal breathing and barely had a pulse. Her pulse stopped and MacDonald attempted CPR, but it was too late. Christina was dead by the time emergency crews arrived and attempted to transport her. One of the things Marcus remembers was a phone call that he received after the shooting. It was from Bud, their father. He was calling Marcus to see how everything was going at the show. Marcus, who was in shock, delivered the devastating news to his dad. The day after the shooting, the Grimley family met with Orlando police detectives. Understandably, they wanted answers. Despite a lengthy investigation, investigators never determined a concrete motive. Investigators were unable to recover his hard drive and couldn't access his cell phone due to it having a password. But one thing that was readily apparent was that Kevin was in a dire need of mental health care. Friends and family said, in hindsight, there were many warning signs that there was something wrong with Kevin. It's the things you see in hindsight, like how secluded he lived, the lack of social skills, and the people close to him didn't really realise it was anything violent, but he had an unhealthy and abnormal obsession with her, OPD detective. Michael Morenci said. Paul Noibel talked with detectives and told them he never heard his son mention Christina, nor did he have any idea that Kevin had purchased several firearms. According to Marcus Grimmy, the shooting was not preventable. I mean, it's definitely hard and I have my moments, but I know there's nothing that could have been prevented from this happening. After her death, Christina's family released most of her music that was unreleased at the time of her death. Some of these songs and music videos went on to chart highly in the billboards and iTunes in the following months. Marcus later found a silver line in the aftermath of his sister's death and remarked, I feel very blessed because tragedies happen every day and people are left with nothing. Christina left behind video, pictures, records so we can have so much to hold on to and it helps us cope because it feels like she's still here with us. A few weeks later after the shooting, the investigation was officially closed due to the death of the offender.